What is going on everybody? Brian Mann here, Hands-On Auto Training. Uh, in this uh, video, we're gonna be dealing with a 2015 uh, Mercedes-Benz. This is a GLA 250. This thing's been around the block, if you know what I mean. The dealership had thrown a bunch of parts at it and got nowhere, unfortunately. I got called in later on down the road and uh, we got this thing running. Guys, this is probably one of my better finds of the year. Um, I don't think you have to be a rocket scientist to be able to uh, see what I see here. It's just a matter of knowing uh, what you're looking at and what you're looking for in a pattern. So I'm going to take you along step by step kind of and uh, go through this. But first of all, if you have not hit the like and subscribe button, please do that. I really do appreciate all the support. And if you want to learn more about this scope teching, uh, testing techniques and procedures, be sure to check out Hands-On Auto Training. We do have the membership site up if you go to online courses and check out the core stuff. If you check on, uh, look at all courses here, let's say view all courses, you see right here we do have this uh, introduction to ADAS class that's starting to get going on there. I'm going to be adding lessons to that all the time, but if you go to view all courses, I do call the course uh, Introduction to PicoScope, it's right here. And we do have quite a few lessons that are built into this and uh, uh, math channels and uh, measurements and stuff like that is all there. So if you're interested in that, uh, be sure to check that out. So that being said, let's get started here. This vehicle came in uh, to the shop that I was uh, subcontracted by for a uh, crank no start situation. Uh, supposedly died going down the road their customer said that it was at the dealer. The dealership had replaced two coils, a crankshaft sensor and two camshaft sensors, an engine wiring harness and an engine ECM. I don't know all the details about that, but these are the parts that were put in there and we still have a crank no start. At this point, we have a uh, no spark, no uh, uh, fuel injector pulse situation. The scan tool does read cranking RPM. Uh, based on what the technician told me, I didn't verify that. The shop basically called me up to ask me to come out and scope test this thing with a Pico scope. They did have a snap-on scope, and I am going to go over what the snap-on scope does show you in just a little bit here. I think I can hit this button. We can, uh, there you go. We, we do have the snap-on scope up. I do want to show you a few things that we can do over here with the snap-on scope, and I'll show you one feature that probably would have found this problem. Guys, when I arrived on site, the first thing I did was uh, find out where the ECM is. And on this particular vehicle, it's boom, right underneath the hood. Really easy to get to, not hard to actually access. I popped the little plastic tabs off so I could see the connectors. But the big question is, how did I know where I was going? I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you that stuff right now. Let's take a look here um, at my desktop. Here you go. Um, on this vehicle, uh, this is at Mercedes-Benz, you go in here, um, I want to go to diagrams. What I'm doing is I'm looking for uh, the electrical diagram of the powertrain system. I want to find out where are the wires or what color are the wires for the crankshaft sensor, the camshaft position sensors. Um, I want to do that. Now the one other thing that I think I forgot to mention already uh, was that this vehicle supposedly would run if you unplugged the intake camshaft sensor. Uh, when the shop had called me and told me this, um, I thought right away that must be a timing problem. Now they didn't say it ran great, they said it actually ran, but it ran poorly with an intake camshaft sensor unplugged. So that was kind of why I was thinking we gotta be checking the timing and that's what the shop was thinking too. They did scope out the cam and crank sensor signals with the snap-on tool on the scope side of things and did see a pattern that looked uh, okay to them. You know, we had a nice square wave going on and that's why they thought that was okay. So looking up the diagram for this, we're gonna go to uh, electrical interactive uh, non-OE is what I did. And I'm going to show you what I did. I scroll down to the powertrain management system, engine controls, and we're going to go over here. And once we click on this, this is using all data. Uh, all that has great information. I'm sure you could probably get the same information uh, in a multitude of different uh, uh, venues. But I'm looking for the crankshaft and camshaft position sensors. So I'm going to zoom in on this. And one thing I'll tell you right now, once we get to this point, when we're looking at this intake camshaft sensor and this exhaust camshaft sensor, we can tell that the white wire here, white and black, is spliced together and we have our red and yellows spliced together. So I know right away that my signal wire must be these here, the number two on both these. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. So we got those highlighted. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. And I believe my crankshaft sensor was over here. And it's the same thing. We're kind of looking for uh, which, which wires are spliced together and which ones are not. Click on this one here to highlight this. So now we know where our crankshaft sensor uh, wires are. And if you go over here, you can see that uh, this is 
connector M. This is really nice. I don't work on a lot of Mercedes Benz, but the connectors actually had a big letter on top of them. So this is M, and you can see this is uh, terminal number 81, yellow and white. And if we go ahead and zoom back out over here and uh, take a look, we'll go over here. And on this end of the connector, it's the same connector, should I say, connector M, we have terminals 34. Oops, I highlighted everything. That was a mistake. We had, uh, I think it was 34 and 35. I've got to go back here and re-highlight this. There you go. I want to make sure I got both of those going. Um, that's the one thing I got uh, slippery fingers sometimes. So we got 34, and uh, where is that other one? I lost it. Um, this is a challenge here. Oh, the other one goes the other way. Let's go this way, all the way over here. And we got this one red and black, and that's terminal, I believe, 58 or, yeah, it's terminal 58. So we know which wires on this connector we're looking for. And you can also do a connector end view if you wanted to of the, uh, of the uh, powertrain control module or engine control module. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll go do a uh, diagram and we're going to go over to, uh, let's see, electrical connectors, right where my head is, right in the way. Connectors, and uh, maybe this isn't where I looked. I don't even think I looked at this, to be honest with you. On the connector, it actually had the numbers. It was really actually very easy to look at. But I believe if we type in crank sensor here, I believe if we look up for like a crankshaft position sensor uh, code, uh, any of these crankshaft position sensor codes, if we follow the system check that they have, I do believe that they go ahead and give us the connector views, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. It is nice that they give you a scope pattern, but this is only part of the situation here. We don't have a complete view. I did see somewhere in my uh, perusing a connector end view, but I'm not so worried about that because I ma made sure I had the right wire colors and we went in here. Now, when I scope tested this, this is using PicoScope 7. This is the pattern that I had, okay? We have this pattern, and this is exactly the pattern I have. This is my capture. Now, I did not have a pattern to compare it to right away. I had to go look on diagnostic network, but I did start taking a look here. Let's just go ahead and zoom in on a little section. I did take a look and figure out, well, okay, there's our missing tooth. We have that part of our pattern. That's nice. And I did just drag a ruler out, I believe, and I started seeing that my camshafts uh, are definitely lined up with each other at certain points, and that's usually a good thing. I didn't know exactly how this was supposed to be, so I went over to Diagnostic Network. If you go to Diag Network and you can sign up there, this is a great uh, place to go. Chris Martino had a setup of a 2021 Mercedes-Benz, and I took a look at his capture, and I actually found out that mine matched his, I mean, to a T. Take a look at uh, his pattern. At this point, looking back and forth, I determined, I'm like, I like the way this looks. I actually have my rulers out. I downloaded his PicoScope file, and I was using rulers to count teeth because that's the way I like to do it, uh, use a measurement. Let's go ahead and uh, show you that here. Let me scroll this back up. And uh, if we just go ahead and put a measurement out, I want to measure the rising edge count. And we're going to measure this on channel A. Let me make this large. Rising edge count, channel A between the rulers, and that's good. And I'm just going to bring a ruler out here. Oops. Bring my ruler out, and you can see here that this says two teeth. Let's just zoom in on this real quick. Yep, so I had about two teeth there, and I looked at his. We had something very similar. His was closer to two teeth, but there's a reason why I wasn't uh, so concerned with this at this time because this vehicle has had a timing chain put on it, and it never started. The, the tensioner never took any slack out or anything with oil pressure that I know of, but we're good on that. I don't think that that's my problem. So the next thing that I wanted to do, let me go ahead and uh, zoom out a little bit, is I wanted to measure my teeth between uh, the missing teeth. I'm expecting, you know, 58 teeth. Look at this, we have 59 teeth here. So at this point, um, a lot of times when you're using PicoScope, you gotta watch your uh, filtering. I don't have any filtering on. This is exactly how I got the pattern out of this thing. So I went ahead and I wanted to add some filtering. We can go ahead and turn this on, put this up to 30 hertz, or should I say 30,000 hertz. We'll put that on that for all the channels. Just kind of, it takes away some of the fuzz for us. Oops, come on. Sometimes Pico 7 is a little bit, bit glitchy. A little slow to react here. I want to hit that. It won't. I'm going to turn this back off. Turn this back on. Like I said, sometimes Pico Scope 7 is a little bit glitchy, slow to react. This is early access that I'm using. 
and I didn't have this problem before, go ahead and figure, right? But 30,000, and I'm going to put the, our last channel, channel C, to 30,000 as well. Well, let's type it in manually. That's okay. We can do it. We have the technology. And enter that in. And now you can see I still have 59 teeth counted down here. Right here I still have 59 teeth. So I'm going to move my rollers a little bit and make sure that they're actually counting. And you can see here it's 57 teeth and 59 teeth. So I'm like, wait a minute. What's going on? Now, you may not be able to see this from a distance, and I am going to put this file on the website, the member, uh, that, not the membership website, just hands-on hour training. Anybody can go to resources. I will have this file there so you can play with it yourself. Um, right here, okay, right here and right here and right here, there's a little, bit of a, a little bit of noise in my opinion. Now, how can we figure this out quickly, right? I say use a Frequency Math Channel. We're going to go to Math Channels. We're going to go to Frequency of A, and let's just go ahead and... Uh, see what that looks like. So right away, that is a white color. Um, if I wanted to adjust this, I can double click on it. I can change the color, but just so you know, when you hit the next button, you do get to choose your color right here. But I'm using the uh, white color, and this is pretty cool because if you look at this pattern, this is almost like a, a, the crankshaft speeding up and speeding down. Right now it's uh, speeding up, speeding down. Uh, as the engine is rotating over, right, you got compression and then expansion. Well, look at this. We got our dropout for our missing tooth repeatedly every time here. Let me get my head out of the way. There you go. You got that. But check this spike out. Do you guys see this spike that's almost off the charts? Well, there's our problem right here. Let's take a look at this. We've got an extra tooth on our crankshaft that should not be there. Guys, this thing was quite interesting. At this point, I want to know what you think the problem is. Go ahead and let me know in the comments. At this point, I decided to tell the shop to pull out the uh, crank sensor, get a bore scope in there. And this is a little bit difficult to get in there and see. And much to my surprise, I didn't see a reluctor. I was looking for like a reluctor with teeth. This is one of those magneto-resistive um, uh, sensors, or should I say reluctors, almost like you have in a Chrysler 3.6 liter on a camshaft where you can't touch metal to it. And what do we have here? We've got ourselves a piece of rust on this thing, guys. Check that out. There is a piece of rust right smack dab on this, and it's almost approximately when you bar the engine over by hand, it's just about the same, you know, half a, half a crankshaft revolution from missing tooth. There's our problem. Let me show you a picture of the other one. It's very difficult to get to this thing. Let me go ahead and show, uh, show you guys what it looks like on the service information there. Um, there you go. This is their little reluctor plate wheel thing right there. If you look up through the service information, they're very clear about when you use it, don't use metal, uh, or when you remove it, don't use metal to uh, try and pry it off. Don't touch it with metal. Uh, really, uh, probably in my opinion, a piss poor design. I don't really like this style. Uh, I think it's going to be problems. But I do believe that all these problems were, uh, actually, the vehicle main problem was this rust on that sensor. So, what a find there. I was pretty happy to be able to find that and help the shop out. I just feel bad for the customer getting a run around everywhere they went. Uh, that's just bad news. So guys, if you have any questions about using that scope, be sure to check out handsonautotraining.com. A link is in the description. Now I want to show you on the snap-on scope. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, on a snap-on scope here, you're going to see uh, that they do have the guided function test. And the guided functions of uh, is something that's very useful. However, my shop did this and they got nowhere. Um, it didn't help them out. Now I'm gonna show you what the guided functions do look like on a snap-on tool here. So if we go over to, uh, let's find Mercedes, Mercedes-Benz 2015, and this is a GLA, I think. I don't work on Mercedes a lot. This is all new to me. GLA 250, I think it was a formatic, but same engine, shouldn't be a problem, we'll hit okay. And if we go to engine here, and we're going to take a look at our CKP sensor, uh, they have the component information, which is great. Let's take a look when this loads up. It gives you all the, the wire colors, and this actually shows the ECM connector pinout. Fantastic tool, not bad. But this pattern that they show, oops, there's no pattern there. Let me get back out of here. We'll go to a Keon engine cranking test. That's usually a pretty good place, right? The pattern that they show us in this little diagram is not very good. So they give us once again the pinout of the crankshaft sensor and the engine control module connector. Good stuff to have. But they give us a pattern that looks like this. This is almost uh, worthless here, if you know what I mean. This is really not helpful. They don't even give you a full revolution of the engine and um, they're not telling you anywhere how many teeth it should have. 
Now, also, if you go to the signature test on a Snap-on, there we go. They do have a signature test, and it shows you the same thing, uh, the same information. I'm going to scroll through here just to show you guys what's up. Do, 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 do. We're getting down to the bottom. There, it's the same pattern, not really helping us out much. Let me go ahead and do the, um, let's see, out of range or no signal test, because we did have cranking RPM on a scan tool. That's what... Uh, was very interesting here. So let me see what this uh, pattern says to do. And what are they doing? Uh, what are, I wish I knew how they're setting up the scope. Let's see, there should be five volts present. Okay, I think they're just show, checking for powers and grounds. And uh, let's see, scroll down once again, try and get down here faster. They don't really show you a whole lot. So I will tell you that the one thing that probably would have fixed this vehicle, or should I say found a problem, is if you go to the graphing multimeter on this, uh, on this tool, not the oscilloscope, but if you want to uh, scope multimeter and graphing multimeter, I do believe that if you graph the frequency, uh, you would have to zoom in pretty tight and zoom out um, and try and find out where your drops are for your missing tooth. You probably would have seen the spike on that extra tooth of this crankshaft. Well, there you have it, a little piece of rust right on this reluctor ring causing all kinds of issues. Guys, uh, we're all learning every day, and the thing is, if you practice uh, good habits and practice learning your equipment, what good looks like, what bad looks like, learn how to use some freq frequency measurements, some math channels on your picoscope, you'll be able to do great things. I almost guarantee you, like I said, that snap-on scope would have caught this problem without an uh, issue on the graphing, uh, graphing the frequency. I'm pretty confident it would have, but I don't know. I did not have a lot of time to go back there and try it out. The shop actually uh, went in there with their bore scope. We saw the problem, but they took a, it took them a long time to get in there and actually pick off that piece of rust with a piece of plastic or whatever they did. I'm hoping it didn't fall off and go uh, get stuck back on there again. But the vehicle ran and no codes. So this was a very interesting find. I had a really good time uh, finding it. Guys, I want you to know if you like my content and you want to learn more, be sure to check out the membership site, handsonautotraining.com. You guys have a great day, and I got some more content coming on the membership site soon. Bye-bye.